Ladies and gentlemen, fellas, 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 what's up? And if you're brand new, you don't know what's going on at all. You don't. What's going on here is what my Aunt Joanne always says. What's up, everybody? And this is a Sunday night football showdown slate, which I have not done this year. And I did them last year at times, but to be honest with you, it was making me burn out, right? I was doing them on Saturday afternoons, Sunday mornings after already doing like two or three pieces of content those days anyways. So adding this as well was just a lot. Right now, I had some extra time. I've been chilling out, relaxing, max and all cool today. So I had some extra time. I put up the projections, rankings, ownership should be coming soon. Some notes on Patreon. And I figured, hey, I can crank out a quick 20 minute video as well for YouTube. So I appreciate y'all being here. Sunday Night Football. And then I also saw, look, it's a decent game, it seems to be, but also a, a very good prize pool with a million dollar Ruskies to first. So now I was like, all right, we got to do this bad boy. This does not mean I'm going to do them every week. I had some time this week. If you want to get the projections, rankings, ownership, check all that stuff out. It'll be linked down below on my Patreon, patreon.com backslash Sal underscore Vetri underscore. And a lot of other stuff is going out there as well. Not just in the NFL, but golf as well and soon to be NBA. But you can check that out. We won't be going live for this one, but please do as we continue to go. Hit the like and subscribe. What we do here is basically I'm going to go through every single player that I think is viable. I currently have guys that are, I think are viable, or at least we're going to touch on somewhere around like 25 guys in this slate. Obviously, not all of them are going to be in my player pool. So I'll put a yes on them, a maybe or a no as my early interest in what is early on in my player pool. And I expect to get a good amount of it in my 150 max builds. And as we go down through it, we'll go through every single player. I'll give you some analysis. I'll touch on some of the guys ownership some of their projections things like that throughout you can follow along with the patreon stuff if you want to during this show to see everything on there but before we get into it super draft oh boy oh boy i mean i'm hoping i'm very hopeful that somebody takes on the twenty five thousand dollar contest on super draft this week as two people this season in the last four weeks two people already in the community on patreon in the discord have won the twenty five thousand dollar prize so two out of the last four weeks were 50 percent hit rate we're gonna put this company in super draft out of business promo code sal sal gets you a 50 percent deposit match free money free money up to a thousand dollars Ruskies over there. My name again, S-A-L. I have projections. I have rankings. They're up right now on Patreon for Super Draft. We'll talk through them and to just kind of start the show off with talking through it. My number one Super Draft play today is going to be Cam Newton, but one that might actually seem pretty interesting is Nick Folk. As long as he plays the kicker for the New England Patriots, he's expected to play. I have him as my second highest Super Draft play today as he has a 2.5x multiplier projected for 6.8 points, meaning that I have him for 24 Super Draft points as it is a multiplier format. You can look at more information linked down below and using that promo code SAL, you'll get yourself a nice little deposit bonus. If you are a patron and you're not signed up for that, you're leaving money on the table. And if you're not signed up in general, where no pros are going, they're playing on DraftKings, they're playing on FanDuel, they're playing on Yahoo, they're playing on sports betting now and player props with a lot of states legalizing that and making it easier. They're not spending the time to play Super Draft. And if they are, they're not spending it properly. It's like their fifth priority. There's a huge edge right now with guys in the communities winning the top two prize pools on Thursday showdown, the top prize pool on Monday showdown. Our community is literally just dominating Super Draft right now. So be sure to check it out. Link down below, get signed up and take advantage of the dollar Ruskies. So let's start this bad boy and we're going to start off with the quarterbacks. Lamar Jackson being the first one hasn't been that great this year. 27 attempts per game, three deep per game right now. Does not have the greatest offensive line. Borderline bottom third in the league at 19th overall this year. 189 yards per game is not good, but he does have a positive 28% pass blocking advantage against a New England team that's not doing anything well right now. Outside of tackling, they're 24th in pressure rate, they're 19th in coverage, they're 31st in run defense. Not great. Lamar Jackson right now is my highest projected player by about two points, a point and a half on the slate. I will definitely have interest in Lamar Jackson. His price point at 12,400, it is expensive. It's not the normal 13, 13.5k that we're used to last year's showdown slates because he's not the same Lamar as last year, but I still think this is a very good spot for him. Yes, the Patriots can tackle. They cannot stop any run. I think Lamar gets there on the ground in this game for you, and there's not a lot of great options when you factor in the upper range. We're going to talk through all of them, but you have the quarterbacks here, and that's kind of a void until really nothing left on the slate. The mid range is overpriced. The bottom range looks like a bunch of guys that actually look decent on the slate from a really cheap value standpoint. So I actually think that there's four or five guys that are below maybe $2,000 that actually have upside on the slate to score five or more fantasy points, especially taking into account their ceilings even more than that potentially. So I think that more times than not just getting 20 points from Lamar, 18 points from Lamar can actually pay off for you here. Now you do have Cam Newton for $1,600 cheaper and he looks just as good as Lamar. From a point per dollar standpoint, I actually like Cam Newton more if we're just going based on point per dollar. He's my number one super draft play today. And at $10,800, he's looking damn fine. A minus 8% pass blocking advantage against Baltimore's 28 pass rush. I'm not too concerned about that. You're getting 27 attempts per game as well, similar to Lamar Jackson this year. 7.4 yards per attempt is actually better than Lamar right now and 314 rushing yards on the year is fourth amongst all quarterbacks eight touchdowns is tied with Kyler Murray but Cam Newton actually missed some games as well so he's actually on pace for per game touchdowns on the ground to lead the NFL right now at the quarterback position and high up there amongst all running backs Cam Newton is a yes for me I like him a good amount I prefer Cam Newton to Lamar Jackson especially when you factor in the price
price discount. I have Lamar projected for more points, but factoring in the price discount, Cam Newton, then Lamar for me from choosing on the top end here. And now we start to get to some guys that, yeah, they look good in terms of their usage overall, like their, their target share, some wide receivers are going to get to, but their price points are pretty out there, right? $10,000 Marquise Hollywood Brown. Look, he's going to have a matchup against JC Jackson. He might even see if Stefan Gilmore returns for this game, Stefan Gilmore. JC Jackson has been good on the year, although he just got burned by Rashad Perriman, a similar type of a player to Marquise Hollywood Brown, not the exact same size wise, 58% catch rate so far this year is what JC Jackson is allowing. Six targets per game is a 23 and a half target share for Marquise Brown this year. He's playing 15% out of the slot, just 52 yards per game, but he is seeing a 40% air yard share on his team. That's the sixth highest in the NFL. He's getting a lot of opportunity downfield, just three red zone looks. That's a concern. Lamar's not hitting him. Lamar's not being accurate this year. So that is a major concern. Right now for me, Marquise Hollywood Brown is definitely in play at $10,000 because we haven't seen it this year, but he has those upside games, the multi-touchdown games last year, the 50 plus yard touchdowns. He's definitely not somebody I'm prioritizing at $10,000 for somebody who only grades out for around 12 fantasy points for me at this price tag, but he will be in play. I will not be ignoring it. It's not something that if you're playing one lineup that I'm probably going to try and prioritize. Again, I would prioritize the quarterbacks above him. And this next guy, $9,600, Jacoby Myers. This is a very expensive price tag, again, for what seems like a number one wide receiver. Now, Nikhil Harry might return from, I believe, a concussion. He's going to be questionable for this game. Either way, I think Jacoby Myers is still the number one wide receiver. Over the last three games, basically since taking on a starting role from being a wide receiver three, three weeks ago to now the last two weeks, the undisputed wide receiver one. He's had 22 receptions on 30 targets for 287 yards, and he's coming off of a 169-yard game on the last time that this team played in prime time. He'll likely see some Marcus Peters. This is a brutal spot. This is the situation that you actually have to be concerned with for Jacoby Myers. Marcus Peters allowing less than one yard per cover out so far this season. This is going to be a good secondary still. Jimmy Smith has been absolutely elite. So if you see some Jimmy Smith, even worse for Jacoby Myers right now. Myers goes all over the field, 43% of the time on the left side of the field, almost 50% in the slot. So he'll get to actually move all over the place, but he's also going to see then if he goes into the slot, some Marlon Humphrey. So it's brutal everywhere for him. This will really test his overall talent and target share. So Jacoby Myers right now for me, also in play, not a standout. Yes, I would prefer Jacoby Myers over Hollywood Brown right now, just on a straight up volume standpoint at this point. But let's keep on moving now to a guy that I'm not going to have interest in, Damian Harris. He's expected to play in this game. He got limited practices all week. He has a very good run blocking advantage, positive 42% against Baltimore's run defense that has been good, but the run blocking for right now, the Patriots has also been very good. But Damian Harris at $8,800, no thank you. Less than 35% of the snaps in four of his game, five games he's played this season. That's not great. He had 14 carries for 71 yards in the last game, but he saw no targets on like two routes run. In his five games this year, he's only seen two targets and he only has five red zone carries. So if you're telling me that right now, I'm basically paying $8,800. This guy should be $5,800, maybe $4,800 for a guy who's only going to get work inside the 20s, right? So from the 20 to the 20, you're going to get your carries. You're going to get your 10 to 12 to 14 carries in this game. But in the red zone, it's Cam Newton time. That's basically what it is. In the red zone, it's Cam Newton time on the ground, especially by the goal line inside that five yard line. And in the passing game, it's Rex Burkhead and James White. So right now for me, Damian Harris, I don't have any interest in him. At his price point, he actually grades out as my second worst play on the entire slate point per dollar wise. And we're going to get to another running back pretty shortly. That's actually going to be my worst play in the slate point per dollar wise. We continue to go down now to J.K. Dobbins, who has been getting fantastic usage, but it seems like Mark Ingram is going to return for this game. If indeed Mark Ingram returns, and if he's out, if he's a late scratch or something like that, check into my updated projections over on Patreon. Link down below, patreon.com backslash Sal underscore Vetri underscore. What are you waiting for? But he has a very good matchup. Positive 38% run blocking advantage for Baltimore against the 31st, second worst ranked defense against the run in the New England Patriots. And on the season, he's been seeing a 33% opportunity share, six and a half attempts per game, 2.2 targets per game, and only seven red zone touches overall this year. Gus Edwards is getting all of the red zone work. So again, very similar to Damian Harris in some ways, except he has a better passing game role, J.K. Dobbins. You're not getting much red zone or goal line work for J.K. Dobbins this year. The upside over these last two games since Mark Ingram has been out, 30 overall touches and 39 routes run. That's great usage. But now Mark Ingram returns and in the games of Mark Ingram has actually been playing this year, you're seeing not that much usage. You're seeing like an overall like six or seven opportunities with no goal line work. So it's not going to be a spot that I want to pay up for J.K. Dobbins. If indeed, I mean, either, either way he's expensive, but if indeed you're going to have the return of Mark Ingram, which it seems like I probably don't get to any J.K. Dobbins, especially if I'm, I mean, if I'm playing 150, maybe I get to sprinkles of him, but if I'm playing like three to five to 10, I'm not going to get there. Now, somebody who's been struggling this year, but he actually got a fair price point. I mean, relative to like Hollywood Brown, the price point of Mark Andrews is very fair, almost $3,000 less, right? So $7,600 Mark Andrews, I have interest in. A 21% target share this year is very similar to Hollywood Brown. Five and a half targets per game compared to six targets per game. He's playing 33% of the time out of the slot. He's number three amongst all tight ends in terms of air yards. So he's seeing air yards as well. I don't really get the price discount between Hollywood Brown. I understand an outside receiver has a lot more upside usually than a tight end, but Mark Andrews two touchdown upside is probably higher than anybody else on the slate, maybe outside of Cam Newton. But even then, if we're just talking about passing touchdowns for a pass catcher, probably the highest on the slate right now, 10 red zone targets is overall fifth in the NFL amongst tight ends, but he's seen less than six and a half points in three straight games. So that's the major concern here. The linebackers for New England are not anything that's scaring me. I actually have a lot of interest in Mark Andrews at 7,600 because of the fact that 
that if you're not going to play those quarterbacks or you want to play one or two of those quarterbacks, how do you get different, right? You have to going to pay down all the way. If you're going to spend a lot of money and go to some of the cheaper guys we'll talk about in a few moments, but then this guy in the mid range, the mid range becomes very bad pretty quickly, right? We just talked about Damian Harris, JK Dobbins, no interest. We're going to talk about a couple of guys that running backs for the Patriots and Baltimore that you're going to see pretty quickly. I have some interest in some, no interest in others. Mark Andrews is like the only guy in this range between let's just say Jacoby Myers in the bottom of maybe like the 4k range that I start to have some actual interest in. So he's a yes for me because then we get to Mark Ingram who I, I teased it earlier. He's my worst play in the slate point per dollar wise. I mean, outside of the killer Harry who I've projected for zero points because I think he's going to miss. Look, he's expected to be back. He's seen a 36% opportunity to share so far this season, but just eight attempts per game, less than a target per game this year, getting some red zone work, right? But he's splitting it with Gus Edwards. still. only five targets on the season. You likely need two touchdowns for Mark Ingram to actually hurt you, right? Okay. Maybe he gets 80 yards and a touchdown. 14 fantasy points can get you there, but it's 7k. If you're not playing him for it to actually hurt you, you probably need a two touchdown game. I'll just be betting against it, especially if I want to cater this video to people who are just going to be playing guys and girls playing like just one or three lineups in this one. He's going to be a no for me at $7,000 flat. Now we get to both Patriots running backs. And honestly, I'm not that thrilled to play either of them in like one lineup. They're both going to be in play for my 150 maxes. Burkett at 6,800 coming off of a game where he saw 15 overall opportunities, 67 yards and a touchdown finished as the running back eight last week, because that's how bad the running back position was last week. He leads all Patriots backs. Now not Cam Newton, just running backs with 14 red zone touches so far this year. And he's seeing averaging so far 10 opportunities per game. So Burkhead's in play for me. The price point does not make him anywhere near a slam dunk play. A peek behind the curtain. I haven't projected for 6.8 fantasy points. So honestly, not good at all. But this entire slate, especially up top, looks very bad outside of the quarterbacks and maybe some Mark Andrews. So we have to just try and have some guys in the player pool, right? Same thing can be said for James White. Only 11 touches the last three games and under 30% of the snaps in two of the last three games. That's terrible. Only a 25% opportunity share so far this season, five targets per game, 2.7 attempts per game. He's basically a touchdown or bust at 6,200. Like if you're getting James White to only have six touches, at best, he's going to have what, 50 yards on those. If you're not going to get the touchdown out of him, it's going to be difficult. At 6,200 with a lack of mid-range options, he'll be in my player pool. But again, not somebody I'm thrilled to play. Ravens defense at 5,400, not something I'm going to get to here. I would actually prefer James White and Rex Burkhead to this price point. They're ranked 12th overall in total defense. They're good against the run. They're good in tackling. They're good in coverage. They're just not that great at generating pressure. Either way, it's a price play here. I don't have much interest at 5,400. Willie Steed at 5K flat, 83% of his snaps out of the slot so far this season. The concern here though is that he's going to see some Jonathan Jones, who has been good so far this year, allowing a 62% catch rate. Willie Sneed, though, nine catches the last two games, four plus in each of those last two games as well. He's run 20 routes per game on the season, 3.2 targets per game, averaging 36 and a half yards per game. So the verdict on Willie Sneed is a no. If you're playing 150s, you you'll probably get some of him, but at $5,000, it's probably going to be a no. Now, here's another guy that I actually like. The mirror bird at the price point right now that you're seeing a 4,400, if anything, is a rare value play that we're actually finding on this slate right now. Now, he's a brutal matchup versus Jimmy Smith. Probably the worst matchup on the entire slate for him is going to be against Jimmy Smith, so this does not look all that great, who allows just 0.35 yards per cover this year. Sure, he'll also see some Marcus Peters on the opposite outside, but you're probably going to see a good amount of Jimmy Smith based on where these guys line up for the most part. He's seeing five targets per game and 18% target share, rarely in the slot, just 7% of the time this year, 42 yards per game of the season. Coming off of a nine target game is very well, so the mirror bird is actually going to be a rare uh, we're seeing so far in the slate. Yes, for me, the matchup is brutal. I'm hoping he can avoid that just a little bit, get to Marcus Peters and survive on volume. The price point is the main reason why I'm okay going to Demir Bird at this price point against Jimmy Smith. He's going to be a yes for me, $4,400. And now we'll scroll down so we can finish up the slate that's below $4,000. And if you're still here with me, please do. I don't normally do these Sunday night football videos. Usually last year was leading to me burning out, like I said, at the top of the show. So I had some time. I figured that I would do this. I feel pretty fresh. Hit the like button for me. Hit the big old subscribe button as it pops up. And if you have not yet already, type in superdraft.io. Make it the positive over there using the promo code SAL. Give yourself the best chance that there is in the industry to win dollar rooskies because there's no professionals over there. And it's just some contests don't even fill. You're getting overlay. You're getting rake free sometimes. It looks fantastic. Go over there in Superdraft right now. The community is crushing it. I have projections on Patreon. If you want even more tools to help you bink some of those slates, $25,000 rooskies on the main Sunday slate, a couple thousand dollar rooskies to first on this Sunday showdown slate as well. So be sure to check it all out. Superdraft.io, link down below, promo code style gets you those benefits. Justin Tucker, the kicker. I actually have a good amount of interest in kickers on this slate because one, it's a lower total game. Justin Tucker has a very nice team total as well, but a lower total game normally is going to be better for the kickers and not that many options around them that are going to be that great, especially above them. That will have a couple of guys below, like honestly, $2,000 that do stand out to me and look decent on this slate, but not a ton with consistency. Justin Tucker averaging over 10 fantasy points per game. I like Justin Tucker at $3,800. I would prefer Tucker to Nick Folk on DraftKings, and then I would prefer Nick Folk to Tucker actually on Superdraft, but both of them look good on Superdraft as well. Now we get to some of these final position players. Nikhil Harry, questionable for this game at 3200 might return. At best, he'll be the wide receiver too. Jacoby Myers has taken his job. He did not produce at all when he was actually healthy this year. Would not be shocked to see Demir Bird also run ahead of him in terms of priority of usage. 
He had five targets per game, wasn't doing anything with them. Just 81 total yards after the catch and 9.1 yards per reception this year, 29 yards per game. He has not been good. I'm expecting him not to play. I'll update that on Patreon projections though, if he is indeed ruled in an hour and a half before the game on Sunday night. Patriots defense at $3,000. If this was last year's defense, we'd be all over it at this point. Lamar's been making mistakes, but they rank 29th overall, according to Pro Football Focus. 29th. The bottom four teams in the NFL right now is this Patriots total defense, according to PFF. 31st against the run, 19th in coverage. They haven't had Stefan Gilmore for a few games, so we can cut them some slack there. 24th in pressure. But the one spot that they are actually good, the fundamentals. Number three and actually tackling right now. I'm not going to have any interest at 3K, only because it's a cheap price point for a defense, but only because these guys below them, I actually have some interest in. One of those guys is actually going to be Gus Edwards at 2,400. Now, I don't love him. I like guys below him actually a little bit more here, but he was still seeing around seven total opportunities per game, even when Ingram was healthy this year, getting some goal line work. And these last couple of weeks without Ingram, 12 attempts per game, three total targets over the last three weeks as well. So you've been seeing somewhere around 13 opportunities per game for Gus Edwards. Maybe that ticks up a little bit for him. Maybe if Ingram's banged up, they don't give him a full workload. But I would feel comfortable with like six or eight touches for Gus Edwards. Now he's kind of priced for it at $2,400. So he's not completely out of play due to his goal line role that he has on this team, but he's definitely not somebody I'm prioritizing. And oh boy, if you if you know me, this first special guest we ever had on this show, he called Nick Boyle, one yard touchdown. It ended up being a five yard touchdown. We'll, we'll take it, seven and a half fantasy points. Nick Boyle coming off of the best game of his career. And now we get him on a showdown slate. Oh my God, move over Aaron Rodgers is the best showdown play ever. Come in Nick Boyle at $1,400. Now he's not going to be a yes, but he's definitely in play as a maybe for me. Now he's only averaging two targets per game, just 7% slot usage, but he's actually running routes, 13 and a half routes per game so far this season. And in week nine, he had his best game. Season highs all across the board. Four catches, season high, 46 yards, season high, four targets, season high. We're trending right now for a showdown slate with the man, the myth, the legend, Nick Boyle. Now let's not get carried away again, but I do have interest in Nick Boyle. He will be in my player pools. He's had seven and a half fantasy points or more in three games so far this year. That's not bad for a guy at 1,400, overall averaging 4.5 fantasy points per game. Next up is Miles Boykin, who honestly, I'm just going to put down as a no. You can get to him if you really want to, but he's basically lost his wide receiver three role to the rookie Devin Duvernay, who's actually $1,000 cheaper than him. In the last few weeks, he's seen some usage, but he's only ran... 13 routes and eight routes over the last two games, but he has seen three catches on four targets, 31 yards and a touchdown, only averaging three targets per game on the year. And he's seeing less of a role right now. So although he found the end zone and has seen four targets these last two weeks, he's actually on the field less in terms of a route run standpoint. Not going to go there at 1200. This is a guy who's a wild card in the slate and can actually give you big upside in Isaiah Ford. Isaiah Ford, the Patriots got him from the Dolphins. He's a good wide receiver. The Patriots need a wide receiver because Gunnar Oliski, whatever his name is right now in the slot, has ran 39 routes and brought in one reception the last two weeks out of the slot for the Patriots. Isaiah Ford is better than Gunna. We'll just call him Gunna right now with an A. Shout out the rapper Gunna. But he's better than him right now, right? It's just flat out the truth. And at this point, we don't know. We're going to have to see what the actives and inactives. The last game they just acquired him. You have to pass like five days of COVID testing to actually join the team. Seems like he's done that. I expect him to play in this one. Now, does he immediately take over as the wide receiver three in the slot? I think he's talented enough to do so. So that's maybe where the risk comes in. But at $1,000, I actually have a good amount of interest in Isaiah Ford. Out of all the guys that we've talked about so far that are below, let's just say, the kicker's price point, I think Isaiah Ford so far at $1,000 flat is my favorite. And we'll finish it out. Ryan Izzo has been battling injuries all week. They basically, they signed another tight end, but they have like no tight ends on this roster at this point. They have a fullback as well, like Jacob Johnson, who could potentially play tight end. So I have like some depth now, but for the most part, not a ton there. Ryan Izzo is expected to play in this one. Terrible matchup against Chuck Clark, who's been very good, allowing just 0.52 yards per cover route so far on the season 44% slot 12% out wide he's seeing two targets per game he's been decent right he's averaging like three fantasy points per game he sees a lot of games with four targets I currently have Ryan Izzo projected for 3.7 fantasy points so all those things look good I won't take him out of play at just $800 so these are the types of guys that I'm talking about if you want to pick off one or two of these guys Isaiah Ford two of them is going to be difficult but say Isaiah Ford comes out with the gunner roll 20 routes brings in four receptions on like five targets because he's actually good at getting open has like 30 or 40 yards that's a very good thing at a thousand dollars so if you can hit on one of these guys, it makes it very easy to play the mobile quarterbacks with rushing upside in Cam Newton and Lamar Jackson. So that's what we're trying to do here. Maybe you even hit on two of them. Next up, Devin Duvernay, $200, way too cheap. He's basically the wide receiver three on this team based on usage the last two games. In back-to-back games, he's outran in terms of routes run. Miles Boykin and outsnapped him. 18 routes in week eight, 17 routes in week nine, but he's only seen three targets and one catch during that span. I expect that to come up if he's still going to be running somewhere around 20 routes. Devin Duvernay is in play for me. I actually have him projected right now as my best point per dollar play, but it's because he's so cheap so don't read into that too much i have him projected for 4.2 fantasy points at just 200 dollars gunner i'm not gonna have interest in look he's ran 39 routes like i said just one catch on one target for negative one yards it was like a screenplay and i actually think that isaiah ford's probably gonna be taking his job or at least cutting into it so i'm not gonna get there i'd prefer devin duvernay if you had to choose a 200 dollars guy so that's right right now that's the entire slate put this together this 20 minute video for you all doing this on my saturday night so hopefully you all
all enjoy it, please do before you go, hit the like button and the subscribe button. And if you made it all the way through on the podcast, take 30 seconds of your time and leave a five-star rating and review. It is the best way to actually help this podcast grow. And you'll be into a raffle to win $50. I give away once a week, $50 to a podcast reviewer. Just leave a way for me to contact you five stars and say something nice about the show. Check out Super Draft, support them, promo code Sal over there, and check out Patreon if you want my projections, rankings, ownership for this slate, and a whole bunch of other information over there that's going to help you be more informed, which helps you win the dollar ruskies even more and more likely chance. Patreon.com backslash Sal underscore Vetri underscore. You can see it on the screen right now if you're watching on YouTube. Thank you so much, everybody. And I will see you all in the next one, which based on when you're probably watching this is going to be our Monday showdown show with the 6 p.m. live stream attached to that. So two pieces of content on Monday. Peace out, gang.